wonderful world of Disney. The concluding episode of The Mystery of Edward Sims. In our story last week, a group of Cornish immigrants arrived in Brimstone and were informed that they'd been swindled. The farmland they'd purchased from a man named Edward Sims was completely worthless. Their troubles were furthered when the immigrant leader's son was falsely accused of murder. You killed him! I tell you, I didn't do it! Out of fear, he was forced to run and hide. The real killer endeavored to inflame the townspeople, to have them unite and drive the immigrants out of the territory. Better let him be, foreigner. Get on your way. Hey, unless you want to stay on, tell us where that killer son of yours is hiding out. Yeah, where is that kid, foreigner? Right, where's that killer? My son is not a killer. Well, maybe he's right, Mr. Gaines. Maybe me and these good folks here, we just imagine we saw that foreign boy sitting there with a smoking gun in his hand. Uh, right. Leave him alone. You just peddle your papers, boy, and stay out of this. Gallagher, who believed in the boy's innocence, decided to take action. Have you given any thought to why he took that photograph of you? Probably wants to get it to that immigrant kid. It's Gallagher! If I were in your position, I wouldn't want a boy running loose who could send me to the gallows. Although Gallagher's ingenuity led to the unmasking of the murderer, he found himself trapped. Hey, drop that gun! Tell him. Tell him you were the one who shot Mr. Parker. You're not Mr. Sims? And who is? Extra, read all about it. Brimstone Blast exclusive. William Killigrew cleared of murder charge. Extra, read all about it. Dying killer confesses. Get your edition of the blast. Extra, read all about it. Identity of Edward Sims remains mystery. Paper, Mr. Gore? Oh. Keep change. Thank you. the way that 
that kid Gallagher is always staring at me. Why, you got no call to worry. Well, Kane's dead and buried. It says right there in the paper he's died before he can name the other people involved. I know what it says in the paper. I also know what my instincts tell me about that kid. How's it going? Almost sold out. I just sold the paper to Mr. Gore. You want to bring that up again, huh? Well, wouldn't you be suspicious if you heard Gore say Kane's neck was at stake? Don't you see? It means he knew that Kane was a killer all the time. You don't even know if he's referring to the murder in that conversation you overheard. Well, what else could it have been? Gallagher, have you told Sheriff Sneed about what you overheard? Yeah, but he said it wasn't evidence. And he's right. It wouldn't hold much water in a court of law. You sit down there for a minute, Gallagher. I want to tell you something about Jason Gore. He came to this town a little over a year ago, and he took over the bank, which at that time was on the verge of bankruptcy. He worked hard, and he got it back on solid ground. And the people of this town think of him as an honest, upright man. I don't care. I still know what I heard. Well, all right. Supposing you're right. Supposing he was instrumental in selling that worthless land to the immigrants. As Sheriff Sneed said, there is still the matter of evidence that will hold up in a court of law. Evidence. Now, you hold it just one minute. Stop whatever you're thinking right there. We hired you as a reporter and not a detective. You mean you want me to forget about what I heard? Like it never happened? In a word, yes. These are matters for the law to take care of, not you. But I could get an exclusive. I might... You might just find yourself looking for another job, too. If I ever find you snooping into Jason's affairs, I'll have no other alternative but to give you your notice. Now, do we understand each other? Yes, sir. Gallagher, it's only for your own good that we're asking you to stay out of this. Now, I think you have some more work to do.
Mr. Sneed. Hmm. Mr. Oh. Sneed, wake up. Oh, it's you. Gallagher, how many times have I told you that being a sheriff is a 24-hour-a-day job? With little or no time left over even for sleeping. Now, what do you mean by coming in here in the middle of the night? I think I know who Edward Sims is. You see, I found this picture of a woman. It was to Ed and signed by... Now, hold on. You saw what picture and where? In Mr. Gore's desk at his house. In Mr. Gore's desk? Yeah. Does Mr. Gore know that you're in his house? Well, I had to have evidence, you see. And Mr. Then what you're really telling me is that you broke in. Gallagher, don't you know that there's a law against breaking and entering? And don't you know that you can wind up in jail if Mr. Gore finds out and presses charges against you? But the picture. Oh, the picture of a woman. Yeah, Della Martin. Autographed by her to Ed. Uh-huh. And in your opinion, this proves that Jason Gore is really Edward Sims? Well, sure, why not? Why, in my opinion, that doesn't prove a thing, except maybe that you're going to get into a lot of trouble if you don't start leaving matters of the law to me. Now, go. Morning. Ladies. In the what is it, Gallagher? Someone following you or something? No, I just wanted to be extra careful, that's all. Oh, I see. Well, now, who's this telegram to? A Miss Della Martin in Pegas. And the message? A dear Della, take first available stage to Brimstone. A urgent. Oh, wait. I haven't told you how I want it signed yet. Well? Sign it. Edward Sims. Edward Sims? Why, that's the man everybody's looking for. I know. But me and Sheriff Sneed, uh, we got us a plan. Mr. Sneed asked me to send this telegram off. What kind of a plan? Well, you see, this woman, we figure she knows who this Mr. Sims is. And we're gonna try and get her to tell us. It sounds like a marvelous plan. Yeah. But don't dare breathe a word of this to anybody. Or it could mean, uh, Oh, no, no, I won't breathe a word, not to a living soul. Thanks, Mr. Patterson. I knew you'd understand. Yes, Gallagher, I most certainly do. <laughs> See me, Jason? Well, come in. Somebody broke in here last night. Broke into my desk. Looked through all my personal papers. Yeah? What'd they take? Nothing. That's just the point. Well, Jason, I may not be too smart, but I sure don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I think someone in this town is trying to link me with Edward Sims. And I thought you said you got rid of everything. I did. Except for one thing. A picture of Della, autographed to me. I don't want anyone digging into my past. You know what that could mean. Well, Jason, I don't know what I'm supposed to do about that. Perhaps you're forgetting. You're just as deeply involved in this as I am. What do they call it? Accessory to murder? However, I think there is a way out for both of us. Yeah? What's that, Jason? We have to get that land deed back. It could be proved in court that the handwriting is mine. Well, getting that land deed back may not be as easy as you think it is, Jason. But necessary. Even if they find out I'm Edward Sims, without the land deed as evidence, I can always claim that Kane forged my signature. Well, what do you expect me to do? Go out to that immigrant camp and say, give me that land deed back just like that, and they're going to hand it over to me, huh? <laughs> Shoot. 
How you go about it is up to you. Five hundred dollars. There's another five hundred when that land deed is in my hand. All right, Jason. This sure does make it a whole lot more interesting. I thought it would. To your wire. To my wire? Yes, the one you had Gallagher send for you yesterday. Oh, Gallagher. Arriving Brimstone, tomorrow's stage. Della. Yes, it looks like your plan worked. The only plan that's gonna work is the one that I'm dreaming up right now. So if you'll excuse me, Mr. Patterson. Why, certainly, Sheriff Sneed. I know you still have to bait the trap. Mr. Sneed. It's a lovely day, isn't it, Mr. Sneed? Yes, it is. Now, if you'll just excuse us, I'd like to speak to young Gallagher. Privately. Sure, Mr. Sneed. You remember what I told you the other night about sticking your nose in where it don't belong? Yes, sir. Well, I got a mighty good notion to lock you up in that jail over there and throw the key away. Well, why? What'd I do? What did you do? You used my name to send a telegram to that... that woman. Oh. You know about that, huh? Yes, I know about that. There. Then it worked. Then what worked? See who this return wire's addressed to? Edward Sims. Don't you see? She would answer saying she was coming to Brimstone unless she knew Mr. Sims. Uh, you? You got a point there? And all she's got to do is identify him as Jason Gore and the case is solved. Gallagher, I told you before that we don't have one shred of proof that the man we're looking for is Mr. Jason Gore. But she could still identify him, whoever he is. I'll question Miss Della Martin as soon as she gets in on the stage.
Are you all right, son? Yes, father. What happened? Father, the man called Blythe, he was looking through our wagon. I, I tried to take him by surprise and... What was he after? I, I don't know. We've nothing of value that anyone would want to steal. Better get off your feet, son. I was up to immigrant camp this afternoon, Jason. I tore that old man's wagon inside out. I couldn't find nothing. I mean nothing. But it has to be there somewhere. Yeah. Well, that immigrant boy jumped me when I was going through the wagon. And I had to hurt him some. I think you ought to know that. Well, then what are you doing back here in town? Suppose they go to Sneed. You do yourself or me a little good in jail. Well, there's something I thought you ought to know about. Now you've told me. Now I want you to get out of here before you were seen. But you keep in mind one thing. I want that land deed back. Oh, you'll get it back, Jason. You don't have to worry about that. You just meet me tomorrow afternoon up that old cabin around Meadow Ridge. And bring the rest of that money with you, will you? Because as soon as you pay me off, I'm going to ride out of here just as far away as I can get. My luggage is taken over to the hotel. Yes, ma'am. Take care of it right away. Miss Martin? Yes. I'm uh, J. Evanbrook Sneed, the sheriff of Brimstone. And this is Mr. Gallagher. He's with the Daily Newspaper. Did you want to speak to me about something, Sheriff? Yes. I wonder if you'd mind uh, stepping over to my office? Why, I think anything you'd have to say to me could be said right here. All right, ma'am. I'd like for you to identify somebody for me. Who? Uh, Mr. Sims. Uh, Mr. Edward Sims. Sims. Mr. Edward Sims. Uh, tell me something, Sheriff. Is this Mr. Sims in some sort of trouble? Now, why did you ask that question? <laughs> why else would you ask me to be identifying him? Did Mr. Sims send that wire asking me to come here, or, um... Did you? Well, I did, ma'am. You see, it's important to us to know who this Mr. Sims is. That's right. Now, if you'd just step over to the... I think I can save you any further trouble, Sheriff. I don't know any Mr. Edward Sims. But you sent a telegram addressed to him. Did I? Yes, ma'am. And I have it right here. Are you always in the habit of reading other people's personal correspondence? Well, uh... Oh, I'm not. It's, uh... Then for the record, Sheriff, I was just passing through your quaint little town. And I really don't expect to stay here very long. Now, if there are no further questions. Oh, ma'am? Are you going to let her get away with that? She had to be lying. Well, there's nothing in the law books about lying unless, of course, you're under oath. The way I see it, that leads us right back where we started. Maybe not, Mr. Snead. Looks like she's never going to come out of there. I checked with the room clerk, and she's in room 28, and she's still in there. Gallagher, what makes you think she even knows where this Mr. Sims is at? Look.
Hello, Ed. Come on. I was wondering how long it would take you to find out I was in town. What kept you? I had to be careful. I couldn't let anyone see me come here. Why? Is it because the sheriff wanted me to identify someone for it? You? What did you tell him? Oh, you don't have to look so worried. I, I haven't told him anything. At least not yet. Della. I want you to know... That you still feel the same. That you meant to at least write and tell me what you were doing and, and where you were, but somehow you just didn't get around to it. I had to get established and bury the past before sending for you. Well, now that was very thoughtful of you, Ed. Bella, listen to me. I spent three years in territorial prison on that embezzling charge. Do you have any idea what it was like in there? Well, do you have any idea what it was like for me? Waiting those three years and then not hearing from you when you got out? Yes, I think I do. Yes, you think you do. Well, do you know what I am now? This should give you a big laugh, Ed. <laughs> I I'm a seamstress. Now, anybody, anybody who needs the clothes mended could come to Della's shop on the corner. Della. Stella, I want you to understand. Will you try? So when I got out, they told me that I had inherited 400 acres of land from my grandfather. I came here to sell the land or to develop it. But when I got here, I found out it was worthless. Mm -hmm. And I knew right then and there that I'd just have to start all over again. Della, it's very important that you don't identify me as Edward Sims. Why? Why is it so important? There's a dispute over this land that I'm telling you about. Now, it could involve me, Della. I've taken over the bank here, and I've made a go of it. But you know how people are in a small town if they ever found out about me? About my being in prison? Well, everything I worked for would go right down the drain. I see. Well, what price shall I ask for my assignment? Uh, no, with you, no. Every, everybody has a price. Even someone you once said you love. Della, please. Please, all I'm asking is that you don't disclose my past. All right, I'll keep your secret. There's a stagecoach returning to Pecos tomorrow afternoon. I want you to be on it. Now, as soon as this thing is all cleared up, I'll settle my affairs, and I'll meet you there. <laughs> Sheriff? Well, not exactly, sir. We were There's just... such a thing as a right of privacy, which doesn't exempt you just because you're wearing that badge. I'd keep that in mind, Sneed, or you might find yourself behind bars in your own jail. I don't think that's too likely, Mr. Gore. And now that you've had your say, I'm going to have mine. How long have you known this, Miss Martin? I don't have to answer that question, but since I have nothing to hide, I will. We just met tonight 
and I found her to be a very charming woman. Now you got any more bright ideas? Huh? Where are you off to? I'm going into town. Oh. Well, as long as you uh, are going into town, would you... Uh... All right, William. I better get going. I promised Gallagher I wouldn't be late. Oh, of course. Finished with that lead yet, Gallagher? No, sir. Gallagher, I've never known you to be a clock watcher before. Well, I'm waiting for somebody. Oh? Darcy. She was supposed to be in here a long time ago. I was going to kind of just show her around, you know. Well, perhaps she's forgotten, or maybe she's been delayed. You know how we women are. If you're that concerned about it, why don't you check with William? I saw him stop by over at the store. Maybe he knows where Darcy is. Yeah, as soon as I finish this. Go on, I'll finish it for you. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot, Whit. Yeah. Whit, do you think that Gallagher is finally getting interested in girls? Gallagher? I don't know of any reason why he shouldn't. What happened to you? Oh, it seems I tried to stop Mr. Blythe from breaking into our wagon. Why? Yes. We still don't even know what he was after. By the way, have you seen Darcy? She was supposed to have dropped off a list of supplies for me to pick up here at the store. I don't know where she is. I was just going to ask you the same thing. You don't think anything's happened to her, do you? I don't know. But it could have something to do with Blythe breaking into your wagon. I better tell Mr. Sneed and you better tell your father. Miss Martin, I'd like to talk to you. I told you before, I have nothing to say either to you or the sheriff. Oh, please, ma'am, it's important. It'll only take a minute. Um, all, all right, but just a minute. Well? I don't know quite how to start this. But anyway, I got this idea that Mr. Gore is Edward Sims. If you've come here to talk about that, I... don't know I what Mr. Gore told you last night, but there's already been one murder. Ah. Uh, murder? Kane. He used to work for Mr. Sims, and he killed the man from the land office. Why, um... Why was this man killed? Because he could have identified Kane as the man who sold that worthless land to the immigrants. 
Callagher, I'm sorry. I can't help you with what you want to know. And then there's this girl named Darcy. We think something's happened to her, too. What do you mean? There's this other guy working for Mr. Gore. His name's Blight. And I think he kidnapped Darcy. All I'm asking is that you tell the truth. If Mr. Gore is Sims, and Sheriff Sneed can arrest him and make him tell us where Darcy is. Yes. Yes, he would go that far. Gallagher, I... You go to your sheriff and you tell him for me that... you're Mr. Gore, Mr. Edward Sim. <clears throat> Miss Martin. I'm sorry if I made you feel so bad. Well, maybe I won't feel so bad from now on. Well, I gotta go now. Goodbye, Miss Martin. And thank you. Bye, Captain. I just talked to Miss Martin. Gallagher, what in the name of tarnation are you so all fired up about? I just talked to Miss Martin, and she told me Mr. Gore's real name is Sims. Well, how'd you get her to talk? I told her about the murder and Darcy. What about Darcy? She disappeared coming into town. I think maybe she was kidnapped by Blythe. What? I figure he's working with Mr. Gore like Kane was. Well, how'd you figure that out? Because he was the one who helped Kane turn the town against the immigrants. And that's not all. William told me Blythe broke into their wagon looking for something. Probably because he couldn't find it, he kidnapped Darcy to get it. To get what? Gallagher, what in the name of blue sin are you talking about? The land deed. Don't you see, Mr. Gore had to sign it Edward Sims, and now he's got to get it back because we suspect him. I suppose what you're saying makes sense. Hey, there he is. I believe I better go and have a little talk with Mr. Gore. Wait, Mr. Snead. If he does know where Darcy is, he can lead us to her. I'll get my horse. Yeah, but Gal... Why should they have taken Darcy? I wouldn't do nothing I'd be sorry for if I was you. Not if you want to see that little girl of yours again. What have you done to my daughter? You don't have to worry about that as long as you cooperate. We're going to call it an even swap. I'm going to swap her for that little piece of paper you got hid away in that wagon, Summers. The deed to that piece of land is what I want. But why? You just shut up and do what I tell you. Willem, go get it for him. If any harm comes to my little girl. Now, mister, who'd want to hurt a pretty little thing like that? What guarantee do I have that you'll be returned safely? Guarantee? <laughs> Why, foreigner? My word's about all you got to go on. Much obliged. Don't worry about your little girl, mister. You'll be seeing her before you think. And if you've got ideas to follow, you best not. Jason? Who does that other horse belong to? 
Well, if you remember, you told me it didn't matter how I got that D as long as I got it. You haven't answered my question. Who else is here with you? So that's how you did it. <laughs> that's how I did it, Jason. Now there's a little matter of $500 you owe me. Now that you have her here, what are you going to do with her? Me? <laughs> She's your worry now, Jason. What are you talking about? I told you that I finished up my end of the bargain, that I was going to ride on. Now I'm riding on. Fly. Now you just simmer down. We ain't gonna ride up there and just knock on the door. I'll handle this. You just make sure you don't get in the way, here. Yeah? All right, Mr. Sneed. I had nothing to do with your being here. But knowing what you do, I can't very well just let you walk out of here. you done. you under arrest. Come on, outside. Are you all right? Yes, thank you, Gallagher. Though I expect the first order of business to get you folks your money back. Ain't that right, Mr. Gore? I got a nice, clean jail cell waiting for him. <laughs> well, I suppose we best be getting back to town. Gallagher, I still haven't seen how a newspaper is run. Well, come on, then. We got a whole new edition to get out. Would it be all right, Father? Well, I'm sure you'll be in good hands with Gallagher. 